Hello, this is Professor James Strickler, and this is a course in American government. This lesson is from Unit 2 about constitutional history, and it's Lesson 7 about the Articles of the Confederation. In this lesson, you'll learn about the debt and tax problems that occurred under the Articles of Confederation. You'll learn about the currency problems, trade problems, and Shays' Rebellion that all occurred under the Articles also. Now, the context you need and background for this is that the 13 new states that were created by the American Revolution worked together uh, under the Continental Congress to win the American Revolution. But once the revolution was over, they entered into a new agreement called the Articles and Confederation, which lasted in place for about eight years, binding these 13 separate little countries together. But in what way did it bind them together? Well, that word confederation, used in the title Articles of Confederation, means a union or an alliance of independent sovereign states that's created by a treaty. So this is another indication that, to start out with, after the revolution, these 13 states were separate independent countries, trying to loosely work together with each other under the Articles of Confederation. Now, what sort of problems did they have under the Articles of Confederation? Why did the Articles of Confederation only last eight years and then eventually be replaced by the United States Constitution? The first problem that they had was that the Articles of Confederation Congress inherited debts that had been run up by the Continental Congress in fighting the American Revolution. The, Ar the Co Confederation Congress had no power to impose taxes to pay those debts. Now remember, there's 13 separate little countries here. Each is all sovereign on their own. And one of the things that they do as a sovereign government over their little territory is that they collect taxes there. So for this Confederation Union to then get money, they had to essentially turn to the states and say, oh, please, state of Georgia, will you give us a little bit of money to pay off this big national debt? And the state of Georgia would say, no, we need our money for our own things. We're not going to give you any money. And so the Arles Confederation Congress was, was impudent. They, they, they had no power to go get what they needed in order to pay off the debts. So that gives us our first big problem with the Articles of Confederation. They couldn't tax to pay off the debts that they owed. The second problem under the Articles of Confederation was that there were 14 different kinds of money in circulation among these new states. Now, the reason there were 14 is we had 13 brand new little countries, each issuing their own money. And then the Confederation Congress also issued its own kind of money. So there were 14 different kinds of just domestic money in circulation, including, and beyond that, you had money from England or from France or from Spain or whatever, kicking around being used too. Now, what's the problem with all these different kinds of money being in use at the same time? Well, in order to, and to go into to conduct business with somebody, who might have a different kind of money than you, you would have to exchange the currency and figure out how much a, uh, for example, a dollar from one state, if they were going to call them dollars, would be worth in the dollars of another state. And having to go through those kind of uh, difficult calculations all the time just to make a simple trade in business makes doing business difficult. And that was particularly problematic at this time because the economy was struggling in the aftermath of the American Revolution. So that then gives us our second problem under the Articles of Confederation, that there was no unified currency to allow them to easily do business. A third problem can be seen as the states established tariffs. Now, tariffs are taxes on goods being imported into a state. So each state at its harbor and its borders, as goods were brought in to be sold, they would stop the people trying to transport them in and say, okay, you have to pay a tax on these things. Now that's something typically that countries do. They charge taxes on goods coming into their country. But this was particularly difficult for the Confederation because the states made it freer for people to do business 
from within their state with Great Britain than with other states. Goods in, being shipped in from that country they had just fought a war with a few years before were charged lower taxes than goods being shipped in from a neighboring state that they were in a confederation with. Now, this seems a little crazy, but they were tariffs are generally used for protection. And so the states were trying to protect their local businesses from competing with the business in the state next door. That's why they charged such high taxes on each other. But what it did was it just hurt everybody's economy. And they were all suffering under this. So that then brings us a third problem of the Articles Confederation. These barriers set up that prevented free trade between the states and hurt the economy of all of them. There needed to be some way to force the states to lower these barriers so that they could freely trade and people could prosper and make more money, but it wasn't happening with the Articles of Confederation because the Articles of Confederation Congress had no power to force the states to, to trade properly with each other. Fourth problem under the Articles of Confederation was a product of this economic recession that was happening. Um, it plagued all these new states, and as a personal result, it caused many farmers to fail in, in their businesses. Now, the reason for that is that they, farmers go in debt, into debt almost every year as they buy uh, seed for crops, and then they have to wait till the crops mature, and then they sell them, and then they're able to get their profit back, that kind of thing. So. These farmers were typically going into debt for their land and for their crops, and they were also having to pay taxes to their local government, their state government. And in the bad, these bad economic times, they just didn't have the money to pay all this. And so they were suffering. They were farms were getting foreclosed either by the banks who they owed money to or by the tax collectors that they owed money to. And this was causing um, great hardship in the countryside. Now, a place where this was particularly relevant was in western Massachusetts. And what happened there was a man named Daniel Shays. Now, the background image here is our only contemporary illustration trying to depict Daniel Shays, the guy on the left in the picture. Um, a man named Daniel Shays led a rebellion of these farmers in western Massachusetts. When the bank's uh, collectors showed up or the tax collectors showed up trying to get their debts and taxes from these farmers, what Shays' Rebellion organized to do was to form, uh, excuse me, to capture the bankers and the tax collectors who were trying to collect money from the farmers and throw them in jail instead for trying to foreclose on the farms. Well, when the government of Massachusetts found out that this was going on in the countryside, that Daniel Shays and other people like him were throwing tax collectors in jail, they organized a, a military force to go out into western Massachusetts to put down this rebellion. But when they ended up fighting with the farmers, the soldiers at least lost to begin with. The farmers defeated them in battle. And when news of this spread, it didn't just worry people in Boston, but throughout all the new states. Because they realized that if the government of Massachusetts is too weak to put down the, uh, the few rebellious farmers, then what's it going to do if England invades, or France invades, or Spain invades? Um, it would not be strong enough to stand up to any of those countries by itself. And the same would be the true of just about any of the other states. If they were left alone and some foreign power invaded, they'd be too weak to survive. So they began to realize that they needed each other desperately. They had to find ways to cooperate to better together, or they would be too weak on their own to survive as countries. And that idea that they had to find a way to cooperate together crystallized in their minds that the Articles of Confederation were inadequate, that they needed to be changed, they needed to be fixed somehow. So there's our fourth problem, Shays' Rebellion and all the implications of it. So you add up all these problems from the Arles Confederation, and it was obvious to them that something had to be done to improve this uh, weak union among these 13 little countries. So now let's review what we learned in this lesson. 
First of all, why did this confederation or the Arnold Confederation struggle to pay its debt? Was it because they were at war with Spain or they were building canals or that they couldn't tax anyone or that they had high congressional salaries? The answer is that they couldn't tax anyone. And this was a fundamental weakness, the Arnold's Confederation. It had to ask for permission from the states to do just about anything, and the states weren't willing to give their permission. Second question, what was the currency problem among the Arnold's Confederation um, was it that gold fell in value? Was it that they had a large trade deficit? Was it that there was foreign speculation about the value of these currencies, thus changing them? Or was it that there were 14 different kinds of money that they had to exchange all the time? The answer is that there were 14 different kinds of money, which just made doing business very difficult. Third question. What was the trade problem under the Earl's Confederation? Was it that there were higher taxes on domestic trade than foreign trade? Or was it that there were no taxes on domestic trade? Was it that there were higher taxes on foreign trade than on domestic trade? Or that there were no taxes on foreign trade? Well, they taxed both foreign and domestic trade, but the problem is that the taxes on domestic trade were actually higher. It made doing business among these states very difficult which prevented in, uh, the economy from doing better. Last question. What did Shea's rebellion reveal about these states? Was it that the states were strong alone? Or that they were weak alone? That manufacturing was favored in the states? Or that farmers were favored in the states? important answer is that it revealed that the states were weak alone, thus giving them reasons to want to adjust the Arctic Confederation to allow them to cooperate better in the future. All right, that does it for this lesson from Unit 2. Um, lesson 8 will be our next lesson from Unit 2, and it will continue this idea as we talk about fixing the Arctic Confederation.